Stakeholders have warned the Nigeria's economy is on the brink of collapse. Uh, this comes as the Naira continues to take the battering against the US dollar and missed an acute FX shortage in the country. We'll have a discussion on Nigeria's economic challenges on the program today. A governor in Nigeria is determined to nip the worsening security situation in the bud. He says he has asked the president for permission to arm his people. We have analysis of this move ahead on the program today. And of course, we'll also have in-depth analysis of some of today's newspaper headlines in Off the Press. Very good morning to you. We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, reaching you live from the studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels Walker. All right, it's an interesting program today, and of course, we are ready with analysis of uh, interesting issues that will, um, of course, be important to you. And we implore you to stay with us from now till we are done. We had a set of ball rolling with a look at what's been trending um, around the social space. We call it a trending, top trending segment. Of course, um, a lot of talk uh, and chatter on the social space these days. Um, imagine being able to speak 24 languages. Imagine being able to speak 24 languages. Is that something that you can afford to do? <laughs> I mean, I, I saw this story online, and a lot of people have been talking about it. And, uh, you know, we, we're looking for, for feel-good stories, searching for feel-good stories in Nigeria today. And this is one of the stories that uh, got people talking and feeling good uh, about the country and about the people, about the resources, the human resources in the country. As a young girl, um, a student of the University of Ibadan, all right, and she is a, in a fourth year of study. Uh, she is a student uh, of veterinary medicine, and she says she speaks 24 uh, languages now. If you speak 24 languages, you are called a hyperpolyglot. How does that sound? <laughs> Even the word itself is complicated. Uh, anyway, um, so it, it's amazing. It's amazing. 24 languages. She comes from uh, the southeastern part of Niger southwestern part of Nigeria. She's uh, Olua Fumibi Babalola. Olua Fumibi Babalola. Which languages does she speak? This is really amazing. You know, she speaks um, German, Spanish, Hindi, Korean, Japanese, Cree. Zulu, Russian, Chinese, Indonesian, Dutch, French, Latin, Hangul. Which country speaks Hangul? Someone help me. Italian, English, Hausa, Yoruba, Egun, Egede, and Igbo, among others. This is just, this is just a few of the languages she speaks. Now, she says she's been, when asked, you know, how long it took her to learn these languages, because I've been, I, w I mean, I'm sure you're also wondering, how long will it take a 24-year-old to learn 24, uh, a young woman, rather, to learn 24 languages? Student, you know, so young. She says that um, she has been remembering languages since she was a kid. You know, she says, I remember I did French and a bit of Latin in primary school, and I used to buy language books. Since I have been old enough to read and write, I've been learning languages. Um, it is amazing, amazing. You know, she says that um, learning a lot of languages has opened unimaginable doors for her. Um, you know, she says you, people's expressions when they know you can communicate in different languages. Uh, and of course, the recent achievement is her tweet, her tweet, which went viral. All right, she put out a tweet which went viral. Uh, I only made one careless tweet to sell myself, but before I knew it, she says, my phone started making funny sounds. Too many notifications from several people across the world, you know, people from different races were sending me messages to offer me jobs, she says. Wow. People from all over the world were sending me messages to offer me jobs. I have had so many interviews and live videos. Uh, celebrities I've always looked up to were following me, sending me DMs. Everything was just crazy. Everything was just crazy. And you know what? In the world today, you don't need to be a graduate or to have some 
uh, uh, to have some some level of uh, you know qualification to have finished school to accomplish anything uh, in the world. You can actually, you know, if you have the talent and the skill, you can get a job even uh, remotely abroad. Um, so this is is fantastic. A fourth year student in veterinary medicine at the University of Ibado, you know, a hyper polyglot. She speaks twenty four languages. That is totally, totally amazing. And uh, this only proves that, you know, the country has a fantastic uh, human resources uh, qualified to, to match any in the world. In Nigeria, I mean, if the uh, environment is, is enabling, will match any country in the world. You can see that um, the, the country did well in the uh, World Athletics Championships in, in Oregon, United States of America. Uh, you can see the country did well in the Commonwealth Games, placing seventh, it could have easily come sixth. And if the enabling environment is there, Nigeria could actually be maybe in the third position in the next uh, Commonwealth Games. You know, so, so the country is, is blessed with a um, uh, lot of human resources, you know, brains and talented people in different spheres of endeavor. We look at what the, um, uh, the, the, the musicians are doing. I mean, it's it's uh, it's amazing what the musicians are doing. Um, you look at uh, how Nigerian music is spoken all over the world, right? It's it's amazing how Nigerian musicians are selling all over the world. You know, even the major artists themselves are not able to uh, to ignore Nigerian music. Music, you know. Um. So the the power of the internet when added to this makes everything so amazing. You look at this, this, this played out in the case of this young woman, uh, Prosper Olua Fumimbi Babalola, you know, probably pro popularly known as uh, Prosper Lingua. Um, uh, she allowed herself, she didn't allow herself to be hindered by the ASU strike. She went to Twitter to share her abilities and to share her engagements during the ASU strike. And this is the tweet that got her phone buzzing with funny sounds that she was referring to. He says, hello, Twitter. I'm a hyper polyglot. This gives me the ability to easily gain mastery of languages. As it stands, I can speak about 21 languages fluently and bits and pieces of 24 others. 21 languages fluently and bits and pieces of 24 others. Uh, and of course, uh, she had to think of innovative ideas after, you know, Asa went on strike in the moment, you know, so she was looking for jobs and all that. And her phone uh, started buzzing and tweet and ringing, you know. And she uploaded a video. Um, a, a user uh, of, of Twitter, you know, replied to a tweet advising her to make a video of herself speaking the languages and making uh, sentences to enhance her chances of recognition, you know. And she took this advice, this advice rather, in 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 good stead, and she put up the video. Now, hours after uploading that video. Um, you know, she updated the public you know, with a tweet, just hours, saying, I got jobs. The power of this app is never to be underrated. You know, she got jobs. I'm so pumped up to see what the future holds. Amazing. And, and this is, a, a, I think, a pointer to our young people, you know, in the country today, not to allow the ASU strike, you know, keep them at home without doing anything. You know, young ones who are listening, parents who have kids, wards, you know, relatives in at home because of the the ASU strike should encourage the young ones to look for opportunities to to grow, to learn, to sell themselves, to learn a new skill, to intern or to intern rather in um in places where they can grow. You know, I mean, I have had people approach me to say I have a youngster who is in at home because of the strike, uh, the university strike, and she interned in your media organization and all that. This is a time for our young ones to do that. It's amazing. It's amazing. Let's move on. Um, uh, this is not not a feel good story, uh, but but the monkeypox uh, situation in the country is is taking on a new dimension. Uh, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, of course, has been very active uh, for some years now. Ebola, you know, came. They were active. COVID came. Uh, they were active, and now uh, monkeypox has come. Uh, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has confirmed 157 cases of monkeypox across 26 states in the country. Um, this was revealed in their latest monkeypox situation report for week 30. 
So for the past 30 weeks, they've been given a situation report. Of course, um, monkeypox has been spreading around the world, but it's primarily known in remote villages of Central and West Africa near the tropical rainforest. It's not a good one at all. You can see some of the pictures on your screen there. Uh, Nigeria is one of the countries in Africa where the disease is endemic. So they put out this information and, uh, you know, it was, it was, it generated some discussion on Twitter. Now, this is what the agency said. From January 1 to July 31, uh, 2022, four deaths uh, were recorded from four states. You have Delta State, Lagos State, Ondo State, and Aquabum State, all having one death each. Uh, the NCDC also said in that latest report that there are at least 413, 413 uh, suspected cases of the disease in the country. And this is what it put, all right? There were 56 new suspected cases in uh, week 30, all right? Um, and they named the states, 19 states. You have Ondo having 13, Plateau State 8, uh, Lagos State had 6, Adama State had 4, Abia State had 3, Bono State had 3, Delta 2, Kano 3, Anambra 2, Bielsa 2, Imo State 2, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Imo 1, Kwara 2, Akwaibom 1, Gombe 1, Ocean 1, Oyo 1, Rivers 1, and uh, Taraba 1. All right, so Lagos State is, um, you look at the numbers there. Uh, if you add all, there's so many numbers, you know, to be added. I can't go into all of it now. But Lagos State isn't um, uh, doing well. Uh, as a center of excellence in the country. Well, it sometimes is understandable, and the Lagos is set to be leading, uh, as the NCDC has talked about these cases uh, of, of monkeypox. And um, we do hope and we're happy to see that the NCDC is on top of the situation um, with DG Fedaya Detifa um, doing his job. I mean, the guy who was there before now who left also did a wonderful job when COVID-19 was on fire. Uh, around the world and in the country. Um, yeah, COVID-19 has gone down a bit, still there, but the NCDC also has not taken its eye off other diseases it has to monitor and also inform Nigerians about. And I think it's a good one that they're doing this. We just hope that, that the political will will back up the expertise being showed by the NCDC uh, so that we can nip monkeypox in the bud. We don't need anything uh, to make things in the country worse than they already are. All right, um, the or you know shootings and killings, you know, got a lot of people not just in Nigeria but around the world. Really, really sad. Uh, you know, about forty persons being killed. He went to church on Sunday to worship God, and that was the last day of their lives. Uh, through no fault of theirs, they didn't ask for it. They didn't bargain for it. They didn't do anything to attract those killings. And Nigerians have been asking for the government to fish out the perpetrators of a dastardly act. Um, uh, some weeks after that, um, the uh, head of a Moteku in Ondo State came out to say that some people had been arrested, he addressed the press and everything, but um, nobody was parodied. We didn't see anyone. Now, these people you see on the screen are people who were arrested in Ondo State by a Moteku for different, um, uh, uh, different uh, what do you call it again, different uh, crimes, not connected in any way to the OO incident. But in parading these people, um, the head of Omotekun, some a couple of months ago, said that they had arrested some uh, of the perpetrators of the OO killings. Now, we didn't see anything, we didn't hear anything. Um, yesterday, the Chief of Defense Staff, Nigeria's Chief of Defense Staff, uh, General Lucky Irabo, addressed a press briefing. He uh, hosted um, heads of media agencies and senior uh, journalists, heads of media organizations, where uh, he revealed that those behind the O attacks had been arrested. Um, of course, this is, uh, uh, this is as we can remember, some gunmen, like I said, stormed the St. Francis Catholic Church in O Ondo State, uh, killing no fewer than 40 worshippers. So this is what he said in that meeting with editors, media executives in Abuja on Tuesday. Uh, Irabo said the suspects would be paraded after an investigation had been concluded into the matter. I like this this uh, you know way they're doing their things, which is if before parading anyone, you do your investigation. When you complete your investigation, you can parade or you can you can prosecute. You know, even that is not enough. You have to take the person to court for the person to be declared guilty. Well, I hope the police will take a cue and know how to do things well. Um, 
But this is what uh, uh, General Lucky Rabo revealed, uh, saying that uh, the, 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 the armed forces had recorded uh, a remarkable achievement, you know, and of course uh, that uh, they had arrested people in connection with the OA incident, and, and that, that's what he said. So it's good to hear. Um, moments after that, the Ondo State Governor, uh, Rotimi Akirdulu, SAN, uh, spoke to the media and said, yes, it's true, they've um, uh, arrested five. He said five uh, suspects in relation to the OA incident is uh, suspected to be the masterminders of the OA killings. And Rotimi Akirdulu, Governor of Ondo State, said they had known uh, about this arrest for some time now but he was waiting for the military to, or the, the defense forces to announce, you know, the, the arrest. Uh, and uh, it's been on, it's been done for some time now. He even said the, um, the camp, uh, the, the, the building used by those who launched these attacks, um, you know, the owners of the buildings, those who own the building, have been arrested as well. Those who gave them some sort of shelter have been arrested as well. An investigation uh, was ongoing. Uh, we, we want more. We want more. All right, there's a good step. Uh, kudos to all those involved in uh, the efforts to track them down, but we need more. Um, of course, we need this to be swift and very quick. Um, I don't think Nigerians will want anybody to repent of this killing. Um, I mean, they can repent to God, but let them face the law. All right, Nigerians do not want any repentant killer. You know, you can repent to God, all right? That's between you and God, but face the law. I think that's the least that Nigerians... Uh, deserve. All right, at least uh, families can begin to get some of those who were killed, those 40 uh, innocent souls who were killed can begin to get uh, some sort, some sort or resemblance of closure. And nothing will ever bring back their loved ones. That's a, a top trending segment for now. Let's take a break. When we return, we look at what the papers are saying this morning with interesting in-depth analysis of the headlines. Stay with us.